Hi, this is Margo. This is Sunday afternoon, November the 22nd, 2020. I'd like to welcome everyone to the show today. This will be my weekly update for methane and sea ice that I will be putting up on YouTube. We're going to go over a couple of articles. We're going to go over also Arctic sea ice and Arctic and the Antarctic. I've had requests for that. We're still uh, going to be really focusing on the Arctic because of the slow refreeze that's taking place. And um, But I will add in um, looking at the Antarctic as well. So I hope everyone has hung in there this week and is doing as well as possible. Um, I know there's a lot of anxiety and a lot of stress and um, so we're just going to focus on these few things and just bring our attention here and look at what's going on with Mother Earth. So I'm going to start with the um, oh, wrong, wrong thing. I've got so many things here to look at. Um, we're going to start with the methane readings from NOAA for this week. And um, this is for the 477-469 millibar reading for the Met-1 satellite in the morning for yesterday, November 21st. Now we've got a lot of missing data here, but this is, this is typical periodically. It's just the way it goes. Our mean or average for this level was 1,910 parts per billion. The high reading was 2,386. In the afternoon, the mean was 1,906. The high reading was 2,449. On the Met-Op-2 satellite in the morning, the mean was 1,887. The high reading was 2563, so that's up a little bit. And in the afternoon, the mean was 1887, and the high reading was 2355. Now, this, this pink color, that's a range of between 2000 parts per billion and whatever the highest number is up here and it's different on each of these readings. So um, we can't pinpoint exactly where that highest reading was. It's um, just somewhere in the pink zone and there's plenty of that. So here's the chart and spreadsheet that where I'm tracking all the data and um, so here's the data for the 21st. <clears throat> Here are the means that I just called off, added up, and divided by 4. We come up with an average of 1,897.5 parts per billion. And that's down 3 parts per billion from my report last week. Last week it was 1,900.5 and it had gone up. 2.25 and now so it's gone back down uh, 3 parts per billion so here it is on the chart where we can see this line where it's gone down so now we're below this 1900 line so um, we peaked out twice uh, once on uh, September the 25th and then a month later on October the 23rd we had a peak both times of 1904.25 parts per billion here they are right here on our chart this year and now it looks like it's going down now um, last year the peak was way down here. I, I started tracking this on NOAA um, in March of 2019. Here's where we started. And so here was 2019. Here was the peak. 
and it was 18 what it was on October the 12th um, 1885 point seven five and then it's um, it went down pretty good we had a few little stair steps but um, we really we really need it to be going down and so we're just in no man's land because it's never been this high in recorded human history and so we're really we're really in no man's land with all of this and um, so our change in methane since uh, March the 1st of this year which was a year after I started recording it's been an increase of 21 parts per billion up to yesterday and the change since March the 1st of 2019 we've seen an increase of 40.25 parts per billion so that's that's a lot so now we'll look at what what it did this week now I track this on a daily basis and do daily updates on Subscribestar and if you if you're interested in those updates um, there's a link in the description box below as to how you can come on over to my Subscribestar channel and um, it's a small community but if you join for five dollars a month you help support the cause here and my YouTube channel is not monetized it never has been so um, I don't make any money off of these videos and um, the only th the only support I get is if people want to contribute through PayPal and the link is below or if you'd like to subscribe for five dollars a month to my subscribe star channel you get access to all of the things that I put up there you get an email notification whenever I make a post we are able to interact over there you can leave comments under the videos we can also private message each other over there I can private message with the members if you have any questions or comments or um, and I like to get to know my members it's um, this is a really unique um, unique group that we're in here not very many people are really aware of the direness of this abrupt climate change and I track the methane that's that's my big thing that I track and also track the sea ice and other things but um, so there's my shameless plug for that so here's uh, where we were last Saturday the 14th we were at 1900.5 and that was what I reported on last week and then on Sunday it went down 0.75 on Monday it went down 0.75 Tuesday down 0.5 Wednesday down 2 parts per billion Thursday it went down 0.5 and then Friday it went back up 1.25 and Saturday it went up 0.25 so we saw um, a few days in a row where it went down so as of Thursday we had seen an, a decrease of 4.5 parts per billion and then th with those two days of increase so now from Saturday the 14th to Saturday the 21st we're seeing an overall decrease of three parts per billion this week so <coughs> um, there's that so now we'll run the methane data 
Now I'm on Copernicus Atmosphere Monitoring Services website. This is what it looks like. It's out of the EU. And I have Saturday the 21st loaded up. Arctic view and surface level ready to go. There's our color ledger down there at the bottom. And here's where it left off on Friday. We're still seeing green covering most of the northern hemisphere and all of the Arctic. Got a little bit of blue here over Greenland, but we're still seeing the greens. Now green this dark green is 1920 parts per billion. Now this is surface level, remember. Um, so this is coming up out of the ocean or through the sea ice or out of the ground. And um, so let's just run this and I'll be describing things as it goes. So the data is for Saturday and the forecast period runs Sunday through Wednesday. Now we've been seeing this high release bubbling up here on this left edge of Severnaya Zemlya. We've been seeing this coming up pretty much constantly since January of this year and also here in the North Kara Sea and um, one of the articles uh, well both of the articles have to do with the methane coming up up here and the temperatures so pay attention to this area um, and the things we're going to talk about on methane because it's going to it's going to play into what we're going to read. We're also seeing in the forecast period we're seeing some higher readings here um, coming up out of out of the Laptev Sea and also here out of now see it goes into kind of a yellow zone there briefly out of the Chukchi Sea. Now the East Siberian Arctic Shelf is right here. It's an underwater area on the coastline that the sediment is full of methane. Um, Natalia Shakova was the first one to go up there. She's a Russian scientist and her partner Igor Similitov they have been exploring the Arctic for I don't know how long decades I mean that's what they do they're Russian scientists and this is their work and they've been testing the methane level in the sediments and one of the articles is um, Igor's it's about Igor's latest um, latest trip research trip up to the Arctic and they tested in seven or eight different areas they did research in these different areas and found really high levels of methane in the sediment so that's to be expected I mean it's this is what's happening now we're also seeing high readings on this northern coast of Alaska. This is near Koktovik and you're going to see when we look at sea ice it is coming back up to the coastlines but in the forecast period in this Beaufort Sea you're going to see the sea ice pull away from this coastline here which is kind of disturbing to me but I guess that's what it does. Um, it's This is my first year to study the sea ice in the winter time up here in the Arctic and it's it's um, it's quite a challenge because you can't 
you don't have a satellite view because it's dark up there so we have to look at computer models now let's hop up to the North Pole view uh oh I didn't mean to do that let's go back to surface level <coughs> I'm using today I'm using a mouse and and a tracker ball <laughs> believe it or not I've got two going on because I've developed uh, I've got carpal tunnel coming up in my in my left hand <coughs> if if I use my mouse too long in my left hand and um, if I and I can't really use a mouse with my right hand I've got a tracker ball on my right hand but if I overuse anything on my right hand then it aggravates my bad shoulder <laughs> so here we are so I'm you I've got both going right now they're both hooked up and so I'm experimenting with using my doing ambidextrous ambidextrous mouse mousing today so bear with me here <clears throat> all right so here's the North Pole view we can see the whole northern hemisphere as we're looking down so here's Greenland here's North America here's Russia Europe here's the Norwegian areas this is India you can see it's still pretty high filling up in methane and it's um, still spilling out and coming up through this Bengal Bay in really high readings and spilling over the coastline I mean and uh, right here in the Arabian Sea and then we hop over to China now you see this white spot popping up just look where my mouse is you'll see a white spot that's here it comes right there you see that that's where it's higher than the reading than the chart it's higher than 10,000 parts per billion in that area and that's in the Beijing area very polluted So even with methane going down, we're still seeing very high readings. We're seeing these green waves move out. And um, here over North America, from the middle, from about Texas over east, we've got at least green as a background color. Um, we've got some really high readings just depending on where you are in the country now West Texas is just just covered up with huge areas of methane coming up very high readings and that's probably from all of the oil oil wells um, and then southern Texas Mississippi Valley Ohio um, then all the way east and then this eastern seaboard see we've got got really high and then <coughs> California up and down um, is still very high we're also seeing Europe really coming back strong with a lot of methane all the way down into Spain and Por Portugal <coughs> Here's the Persian Gulf. All right. Now we'll look at the global view. <coughs> now 
Now we're seeing um, in most of the southern hemisphere the background color is this darker blue now and so that's a definite sign that methane is on the decrease when you see that but we're also seeing see these lighter blues around the coastline of the Antarctic this is methane coming up around the coastlines where the sea ice has melted and um, we see a lot popping up it's all around we can see got lots of lots of areas here also with this darker blue background color it's harder to make out the outline of Australia and Africa because uh, and, and the Antarctic now when when methane got so high in the summertime the background color was this lighter blue and so you could see the outline because it's in black but when we look here the background color is this dark blue which is now 1800 parts per billion so that's this color the next color down is right here and that's 1780 and that's um, like a shimmery purple on top of the blue we're seeing that pop up now see here in the Atlantic in this area and in the Pacific and down here in the Indian Ocean we're seeing the lower levels pop up a little bit more all right <clears throat> now we'll look at the 500 HPA reading and to get the right color ledger we have to refresh so I hit F5 my keyboard because I have Windows and there's your color ledger they still haven't fixed this overlapping the overlapping numbers on this this last high reading it's a range of between 1950 and 2360 parts per billion I would think they could fix that sooner or later but it is what it is so we're seeing a high reading here um, this is Japan so this is just north of Japan and high reading here in China and then a lot of um, dark reds up over the Arctic regions and we're seeing lower readings here look in Saudi Arabia this is it remember 500 HPA that's about halfway up in the atmosphere and a little bit lower here in the middle of the Atlantic too now we'll look at total column and I'll refresh to get the correct color ledger if you don't refresh the color ledger from the level before ends up as the default so here I've refreshed and so here's the new color ledger and this top reading is between 1920 and 2320 parts per billion so here's the highest reading here over in China and then eastern India and then we've got some reds over the Indian Ocean here so we're going to leave that now let's move on I want to what do I want to do next let's move on to sea ice <coughs> 
sea ice and snow cover. I took these pictures. I take these on a daily basis from Climate Reanalyzer. So here's what we're looking at today as far as our refreeze on the ice. We can see the hole has covered up, been has been filled in in the Laptev Sea. As the sea ice has come all the way back up to this Russia coastline, all the way around to the Yamal Peninsula, also uh, around Alaska, it's filling up in these tributaries in, in, in on the coastline of Canada and Greenland. It's coming down further on this east side of Greenland. It's it's coming out a little bit more on this east side. This east side is struggling and um, it's but it's it's coming back just a tiny bit and the Baffin Bay it's come down about halfway in the Baffin Bay. Here it's started to come back a tiny bit in the Hudson Bay and then these white areas on land that's where snow you can see where it's been snowing and you can see snow here in the US as well in Canada. So let's see what it's done this week. Here we are from last Sunday the 15th and um, so here was the hole in the Laptev Sea and so we'll see what how it's changed this week. Here's the 15th, 16th. Now that looks like a little bit of a retreat here on the 16th in that kerosene. 17th, 18th, 19th, 20th, 21st, and 22nd. So let's run through that again. Here's the 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th, 20th, 21st, and 22nd. Yeah, it looks like we had a little retreat over here temporarily in the Kerosene, so I'm kind of not surprised about that. Now we're still seeing this Bering Strait is completely ice free and where the Pacific's coming up into the Chukchi Sea. We're still seeing, uh, you know, Iceland is ice free, Svalbard is ice free. There's a lot of warm water coming up in the North Atlantic and this is still, the sea surface temperatures are still quite warm up here in the Barents Sea and the Kara Sea for that refreeze to happen. Now, so I'll close these out as I as I go through them. Here's the sea ice thickness. This is from the Navy model. This is for today, US Navy. And the the purple, like the dark purple, is about one meter thick. The light purple is half a meter and less. The Where you see it white, um, that's where it's just a little fringe of ice refreezing and just a little skin. Then when you see like the darker blue, that's about 1.25 meters thick. And the dark aqua is 1.5 meters thick. The lighter aqua is 2 meters thick and so on. So here we are today on the refreeze. <coughs> so here's what's left of the thickest sea ice. It's, it's um, stretching out and being squeezed down because of the drift, the ice drift direction and speed here in this Baffin Bay, I mean not Baffin Bay, Beaufort Sea. 
and it's been pushed down onto the Canadian archipelago but it's um, it's also being pulled and I'm afraid that some of this might break off so I'm watching this like a mother hen basically we're still seeing this ribbon of thicker ice around northern Greenland and <coughs> A little bit thicker coming back around Ellesmere Island and here in the archipelago region. We've got a little bit of red here and yellow and green which are thicker as well and this is just very slowly very very slowly thickening. We're seeing a little bit more blues in the thickening and then up here I've named these in, uh, in quadrants one, two, three, and four. So in quadrant one, we can see it's come back up to the Siberia coastline, but it's quite thin around the coastline. It's white almost. It's almost not there around that coastline there. And here is the Gulf of Ob that's refreezing. Here's the Yamal Peninsula. And then here's Novaya Zemlya. It's still ice free. Here's Severnaya Zemlya. It's coming back just a little tiny bit around there. So right here around this bottom edge is where we have been seeing the high releases of methane all year right there and then here's Franz Joseph land it's it's trying to refreeze around that here's Fallbard and it's it's doing a refreeze just on this this um this portion here on the top end but on this bottom side it's the 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 sea surface temperature is too warm for it to refreeze there. Here's the 30 day animation for the Navy. The data goes back three weeks and then it forecasts out a week from today out to the 29th. So this is what it's doing in, in 30 days. I'm going to zoom in while it's running. So here we are on the end of the model <coughs> on the 29th and um, we're, we're seeing this move into from blue into dark aqua meaning that's thickening up now and um, it's just thicken you know it's just getting a little bit bigger with the thickening and um, then this is turning into darker purple so that's thickening up as well so that's a good thing but um, we really need to see the growth the extent to come back and we're not it's not doing that great what 
What is this? Well, that's that's a bad picture. Let's zoom in on that. <coughs> that's what was on the Navy website for. Um, let's forget about that. Okay, here is the. This is the Beaufort Sea. So here we're seeing that thicker sea ice from a different vantage point. And here's the Canadian archipelago. Here's Canada. Here's Alaska, the north coastline down here. And so this is the 30 day animation. It goes out to the 28th here. So we can see it stretching out and then being uh, shoved down. See, it's being shoved down into this co coastline here and then it's kind of pulling back, pulling back up. It's because of the ice drift. And notice at the end of the forecast period, see how this is pulling away from the coastline and see we're getting a good um, it looks like a good refreeze here on the coastline of the with the aqua <coughs> and then it pulls away and so I don't know if that's normal I guess it is I mean I have not studied this this intently before on well, I guess I guess this is normal this is dynamic with the ocean waves and the wind and the precipitation and, and everything that goes on up there so um, here we're seeing the thickest part moving up into the darker red which is about <coughs> Well, this darkest red is five meters thick. This is about four and a half meters thick, that red. And we've got yellows and greens, green tints coming back. So this is getting thicker. So that's about two and a half meters thick here. It's still not very thick. It's just, this is what's left this is what we have and next year when the melt season starts it's it's um it's not going to not going to be good this is going to go fast it's just going to go so fast so here we are on the 21st which was yesterday so we're seeing the aqua ribbon here around Canada and the Alaska coastlines there but you see these darker lines these are the waves and then watch this here's today uh, here's the 23rd now you see it's starting to pull away here see the white areas there on the 23rd this is from the ice drift Here's the 24th pulling away, 25th is still pulling away, 26th still pulling away, 27th pulling away some more, and the 28th, that's the end of the model. And <coughs> we've got a little hole right there. Um, we can also see the thick, thicker and thinner areas in where this sea ice is. Now this is the ice drift um, for today. Same area and so it's going around in this clockwise direction here in the Beaufort Geyer and the the speed the fastest is up here this is in centimeters per second 
And if you watch this drift, it explains the way the ice goes and why it's pulling away from the coastline. So here's the 30-day animation. So here it is on the 28th. So it's quiet. All is quiet here on the 28th. Let's go back. So here it was on the 21st where we had seen the aqua over down here and then you see this is this is starting to go it's starting to turn away here's the 22nd and we can see it, the speed is picking up and so this is pulling pulling the ice that's not anchored in Here's the 23rd, so it's speeding up and pulling it away. 24th, again, it's same direction. It's pulling that ice away um, from the coastline. 25th, 26th, look at that. So it's really super fast here. On the, so that's this goes up to 30 centimeters per second. 29th and so the fastest parts moving up further north there and then the 30th it's all calm I mean the tw the 28th so that was that was the 26th 27th and then on the 28th it's all calm so I just find that fascinating and once you see that you can understand a little bit more about the ice formation here so I think that's all of the images for the Arctic now We'll look at the Antarctic. Here's the sea ice thickness for today. <coughs> Again, from the Navy model. We can see, okay, so this is the Antarctic. Here's north, south, east, and west. Here's this western peninsula. Here's the southern tip of South America as our landmarks. <coughs> and um, we can we can see the thickest ice now this is the Weddell Sea this is a dynamic area and there's an ice shelf here but this is very dynamic and there's a lot of thicker ice here and then down here is the Ross Ice Shelf and the Ross Sea. It's already melted and is uh, a long way out from the ice shelf down here. Now there's a big opening, this, and then it's thicker around the opening. I don't know why that is, but it just is. Um, and then on this east side, this is the Amory Ice Sheet here. And, um, we can see a lot of melting right around the coastlines and these areas where you see it kind of white around the coastlines that's where we're seeing methane come up on the CAMS, CAMS website here's Pine Island Glacier and here's Thwaites Glacier in this area and a lot of melting has already happened here on the edge of the Larsen ice sheets that's already melted and pulled away. Here's the 30 day animation for the Antarctic. <coughs> now this the sea ice in the Antarctic is totally different from the Arctic in that um, the Arctic, the sea ice is in the middle with land all around it. And on the South Pole, 
the sea ice is around surrounding a land mass of the Antarctic so and this sea ice normally most of this melts in their summertime and they are coming into their summer it's springtime down there the sun is up and the sun has gone down in the Arctic and so now the sun is up in the Antarctic now we've got a huge ozone hole still over the Antarctic it's been the largest one they've recorded I think <coughs> but it's still pretty thin down there <coughs> which is not helping matters any So mainly it's just been thinning out and starting to melt around some of these coastlines but mainly thinning as things are warming up down there. This is this is the Ross I Ross Sea here. So if you imagine that you flipped flip the Antarctic around so here's this is south this is the Ross Sea here and this white area is where there's no ice where it's already melted here's the thicker ice on the right side and on the left side and here's the thinner ice where we saw the opening and here's the 30-day animation for the Ross Sea <clears throat> so again we're seeing a lot of thinning out here on on this top part where it's further out and thinning down here so it's just really getting started with the melt down there So that's all of those pictures. Now let's move on to uh, this is the National Snow and Ice Data Center Sea Ice Index. Here it is for today. This is sea ice concentration on the North Pole or the Arctic. I've chosen the blue marble view. And you can see the blues where it's less concentrated or less thick or thinner. And also less concentration means there's more area between the pieces of the ice. And so it's not just all white all the way through it's uh, it's dynamic and changing all the time here's the chart for the extent for the arctic and the blue line is this year the the solid line is less as um the median or this is median between 1981 to 2010 that was average um, here's the dotted line which was for 2012 and we're still below 2012 on the refreeze and we were we had been below 2012 in July for extent and then then we hopped up just a little above it and then then when it started on the refreeze um, it didn't do so well and then it's then it started refreezing um, kind of coming back by mid-october and here we are in November we're still 
lower than at, we're at the lowest for this time of year on extent. So there's the Arctic. Now here's the Antarctic. Again, concentration. This yellow area is missing data. Now these black areas are where the ice is already melted away from the coastline. You can see these areas. And the darker blue it is, it's the thinner, where it's thinner and less concentrated. Here's the extent for the Antarctic, and here's the blue line for this year. So the extent looks pretty good, and um, this dark line was last year, 2019. We were low last year, so the extent is more this year than last year. Now let's hop on over to um, NASA Worldview. I'll refresh this. I'm going to go to the blue marble layer. This is sea ice concentration in the in the Arctic. Here's where we are today. We're still seeing reds and yellows here on the right side. Let's shut this off there. <coughs> here's Svalbard, here's Greenland, Canada, Alaska, here's Russia up here, and here's the Yamal Peninsula, here's Novi Zemlya, and so on. This is the Barents Sea, this is the Kara Sea, here's the Laptev Sea, and um, we're still having some issues here up by the North Pole. It's, I'm, I'm concerned about this, and um, so let's, let's go back to the 15th to last Sunday and see where we were. So here was the hole that we're still trying to fill up in the Laptev Sea. So let's see what's happened this week. Here's the 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th, 20th, 21st, and 22nd. So look at this. It's kind of breaking up up here in the Chukchi Sea. But with it so thin, I guess that any major wind or the waves or anything can just break this up. <coughs> so here's where it's refreezing around Franz Josef Land. And Here's Severnaya Zemlya, where it's refrozen around there. So, there's that. Now, we'll turn that back on. Turn this off. We'll go to the Antarctic. Here's what we've got today. Here's north, south, east, and west. Here's this western peninsula. So let's start over here on this western peninsula. 
So we're looking through clouds and we can see where the ice has already melted all around this Larson side. Let's go back a day or two. This is better. This is more cloud free. You can see where that ice has already melted. This this is what's left of the Larson ice shelves. This is Larson C here. This hole here is where that A68 iceberg broke off in 2017 and it's been traveling and um, I've been showing that it's right here right now this is it's they're worried that it might run into this island here but I think it's being steered electromagnetically because we're seeing evidence of of um, energy beams in the clouds around and it it hasn't moved from this position in weeks literally weeks it's been holding in this same position for two weeks at least two weeks now and this is the island. This is South Georgia Island that they're worried that it might run run into. But if you zoom in, you can see pieces breaking off of it here. Let's see, so I don't know if they're trying to break it apart before it gets gets to the island or or what they're trying to do but it's still massive so it's a little cloudy today I mean it's really cloudy we can't see it today but that was that was a good view from yesterday of A68 now down here, <coughs> this is Pine Island Glacier. We c this is a pretty good view. Yesterday, let's see. Uh, it's a little cloudier today. Let's look at yesterday. Yeah. And we're looking through a thin cloud layer here. But, um, this is where it had calved off last year and we can then this ice the sea ice froze back up to it but that's already melted and that's come away we can see that and it looks like it's melted up here too um, it's just hard to tell and this area has been in a lot of clouds recently now down here this is the Thwaites Glacier. That's a huge one. The, it's called the Doomsday Glacier. And the, it, it had an ice tongue that came out. This is what was left of the ice tongue that broke off. And we can see here where it's melting and coming away. Let's see if we can get a good better view. Here we go on the 20th. But this is the glacier and they're worried that this is just going to be pouring out into the ocean. And um, the ice tongue is is breaking up into pieces now. To fix my mouse here. Let's move on down to the Ross Sea. So you can see where it's melted right around these coastlines here. So this is the Ross Ice Shelf. Here's the Ross Sea. Here's all this open water 
where it's melted away <coughs> and um, this is right down here this is kind of in clouds this is Ross Island see it come here and then has a knob out there's a volcano on that island called Mount Erebus it's right here it's been puffing away for a million years it's still active it just puffs all the time and um, we can see you can see the lines in the clouds here it looks like cross-hatched lines strange looking and over here see this this is real rocky and um, the snow is melted in this area the McMurdo research station is right over here I don't know where it is exactly but it's it's in, it's over here in this area somewhere then here is the Amory ice sheet over here we can see that the see it's melted away this is the uh, the edge of the ice sheet now last year the ice sheet this piece broke off right here you can see a line see that line that's where the ice sheet used to go but so a big part broke off and that was D28 that broke off last year and has drifted out but that's already in full melt mode there and when this when this really gets going we'll be seeing blue blue circles which will be melt ponds on this ice sheet with the there are glaciers that feed that flow down and this is a big area where it just flows out when the glaciers melt and this is an area where we've got methane coming up also down here in the Ross Sea um, over here by Pine Island and Thwaites Glacier over here on the Western Peninsula and also up on the north end and up here by the Brent Ice Sheet this is another one that we have to watch there are cracks in this ice sheet and last year they had to evacuate the research team they airlifted them out because of the cracks they were afraid they were going to fall into the ocean but you can see the ice has already melted away here so this is this will be melting quickly so we got a lot to be watching down here and this is the Weddell Sea here here's the Weddell ice shelf right there and this is dynamic this is um, this is changing quickly Let's see you can see a lot of open water here in the eyes So there's that. Now let's hop over to Climate Reanalyzer. Here are the maximum temperatures for today. We can see greens still coming up from the North Atlantic. Here's two meter temperature anomaly. We still we're seeing a lot of reds over the Arctic and over Russia. It had been going higher and higher this week. It got up to 
the Arctic got up to 6.8 C higher than normal a couple of days ago. Right now it's 5.9 C higher than normal. This is air temperature. Here's the flat view. So you can see a lot of Russia is in the red and brown. Then we've got brown moving over into the Scandinavian region. And then we've got Canada in the blue. Greenland, most of it's in the blue. And a lot of the U.S. is in the brown and along with blues. And where the blues and the browns come together, that's colder than normal air meeting up with warmer than normal air and it causes climate chaos. So worldwide we're up 0.7 C higher than normal. The northern hemisphere is up 1.2 C. The Arctic is up 5.9 C. The Antarctic is up 1.7 C. The Southern Hemisphere is up 0.1 C. And the Tropics are up 0.3 C. Here's precipitation today. We can see it's raining on the coast of Norway. And then we've got snow entering up into the Barents Sea and we've got snow over the Arctic region there. Here's 10 meter wind speed. We've got strong winds up here in the North Atlantic. Then we've got a system here. This is the polar vortex over the North Pole. Here's sea level pressure. We've got quite a few lows up there. Here's the jet stream. So you can see how broken up the jet stream is. In the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere is just massively broken up. We saw sea ice and snow cover. We already saw that. Sea surface temperature anomaly. They've updated this to Thursday. So this was three days ago. We're still seeing reds and browns in this Barents Sea and the Kara Sea now here in this North Atlantic and just um, south of Svalbard we can see it's going up into the pink zone and this is up to the highest reading is 6 C higher than normal which is very light pink to whitish so this is one reason it's not refreezing around Svalbard. We can see it's high around Greenland as well. We've got red, I mean, uh, Iceland. We've got reds around Iceland. We've got browns around Greenland. And see where the Bering Strait and the Pacific Ocean enters up into the Arctic it's in the browns as well. Here's the blob back here. It's the blob is back here in the Pacific Ocean. We've got a lot of reds in the North Atlantic off this eastern seaboard of the US and Canada. Here's the flat view. And we've got reds here in the Pacific uh, to the East or in all around Japan and off the coast of China. We've got browns 
down here around Australia and between Australia and New Zealand and the Tasman Sea and browns all over the place and there's the Pacific blob so worldwide uh, we're up 0.4 C higher than normal the northern hemisphere and North Atlantic are up 0.6 C the North North Pacific is up 0.7 C the southern hemisphere is up 0.1 C the equatorial Pacific is down 0.2 C <coughs> Now we're going to go on to the articles that I have for you. The first one is from the Barents Observer. They're out of Norway. They report a lot of stuff on the Arctic. It says, um, October heat, this Arctic archipelago was 10 degrees warmer than normal. Here's a picture. This is at Severnaya Zemlya. And the caption says the archipelagos of Novaya Zemlya and Severnaya Zemlya were extraordinarily warm in October 2020. So so it's one of the one of those. It's either Novaya Zemlya or Severnaya Zemlya, I don't know. But um we know where those are because I show them all the time. And this this article was from November the 9th. It says it was one of the warmest October months on record and the Russian archipelago, archipelago of Severnaya Zemlya had the biggest temperature anomaly on the planet. So let's read this. It's not very long. Temperature maps from Russian Meteorology, Meteorology Service Roshidromet show that the islands located north of the Siberian mainland were as much as 10 degrees Celsius warmer than normal for the season. And there's the map. Now I downloaded it so that we could look at it in detail. So here's the map, and, uh-oh, I didn't mean to do that. What am I doing? Here we go. <laughs> I won't use the arrow button then. Okay, so um, just f to orient you, this is Russia here. Here's Novaya Zemlya, here's Severnaya Zemlya, and this circle right in here is the 10 C higher than normal. And it's, this is the area where we're seeing the methane come up, that high, high readings bubbling up. Then the area around that is 8 C higher than normal. Then this area is um, 6 C then 4C, 2C, and so forth. So, there's that. So let's move on. This is a temperature deviations in October of 2020. Judging from the data, it was the spot on Earth with the biggest temperature deviation from normal. Also, other surrounding parts of the Arctic were extraordinarily warm in October. Temperature maps show that practically the whole northern Kara Sea and Laptev Sea were 6 and 8 degrees warmer than normal. According to the meteorologist, this year had the second warmest October in the Arctic on record. Only tw 2016 was warmer, the service informs. <coughs> 
Also, other parts of the globe saw October temperatures reach abnormal highs. The European parts of Russia experienced an absolute record, while the nor northernmost parts of Canada saw average temperatures reach 6 degrees above normal. The high temperatures of October followed several record warm months. September was the warmest in Russia on record, and the same goes for several of the previous months. Temperature measurements have been conducted by Roshi Dromet since 1891. So their records go way, way, way back. So here's a, another map that shows um, it's more of a North Pole view and we can see more areas here. Here's Greenland, here's Canada and North America and so on. So I thought that was interesting. So I'll leave the link below to that article. Then we have another article. This one is from the Siberian Times from November 19th. Bubbling methane craters and super seeps. Is this the worrying new face of the undersea Arctic? Video and pictures from latest research missions show gas release in the Laptev and the East Siberian Seas. So this is what methane looks like when it's bubbling up through an open, open water. You can see the, it's kind of foamy there, but it's blue-green when it's released. And the hydrates, um, they look like um, kind of oval-shaped ice cubes coming up, but the, when it melts, it's, it's the blue-green bubbling up, and it's, it's a gas, and that's, that's what we're showing all the time. A team of 69 scientists from 10 countries documented bubble clouds rising from a depth of around 300 meters or 985 feet along a 150-kilometer or 93-mile undersea slope in the Laptev Sea and confirmed high methane concentrations by hundreds of onboard chemical analysis. Scientists have shared the first results of a trip to the world's largest deposit of subsea permafrost and shallow methane hydrates. Fields of methane discharge continue to grow all along the East Siberian Arctic Ocean Shelf with concentration of atmospheric methane above the fields reaching 16 to 32 parts per million. This is up to 15 times above the planetary average of 1.85 parts per million or 1850 parts per billion is what we're seeing. The planetary results are, I'm sorry, the preliminary results are from this year's only international scientific expedition to the Eastern Arctic. And they have a short video that we'll watch. We'll go ahead and show this. So here's the methane. See the glow? It's like a glow, but that's the cloud of methane coming up. Here's another view. So they took that picture off the side of the ship. And there's the ship. So there's that. A team of 69 scientists. Okay, I've already read that. 
A secondary discovery is pop marks and craters sunk deep in shelf sediments of both the Laptev and East Siberian seas, actively venting bubbles and strong methane signals. I've talked about that. Um, I've, ta I've shown um, articles of the craters of methane um, where in, in the Kara Sea and Barents Sea, but it's all over. It's all it's all over up there. As previously discovered, fields of methane discharge showed an increase to various degrees. Now we need to figure out exactly how much they grew, said the head of the expedition, Professor Igor Similitov. One of the new discoveries was a field of sea bottom craters in the shallow part of the Laptev Sea, some of them 30 meters or 98 feet in diameter. They look like holes in the permafrost and, as our study showed, they were formed by massive methane discharge, so they blew out down there. Also, two more powerful seeps emitting methane through iceberg furrows were discovered in the East Siberian Sea. So here's another picture of the methane. There's another one. Now here is a picture of the research areas. Let's see if we can see that. So, so here's Russia, here's Novaya Zemlya, now here's Severnaya Zemlya, and right here on this end is where we're seeing that massive bubbling up. They did not include that in one of their research areas. I wish they would have, but they did get this area um, closer to the coastline. Maybe it was too deep out there. Um, but here are the numbers and they have eight, eight areas. Here's the first one in the Laptev Sea. Here's number two. And you see where the light blue goes into the darker blue? That's where the the shelf falls off and it goes into deeper water. So they were in tried to stay in shallow waters so that they could um, get their get their samples. Here's the third area. Here's uh, where's number four. Four is over here. Five is over here on the um, East Siberian Sea. Uh, six, seven is over here by the Yamal Peninsula. Now we are seeing uh, seeing high readings here, um, and we used to see some super high readings here, um, here in the Kara Sea, but it moved up here. But whatever. And then the last one is here in the Chukchi Sea. This. Um, looks like that's in the Bering Strait. So they, ha they, they have a lot of data. So let's move on. <coughs> here's some more pictures. Uh, okay, here's the a diagram of under the water and the shelf and the hydrates and what they got and everything. Here are the pop marts. And here's the ship that they went out in. Here are the samples, see, that they that they took and they're gonna have to go study. Here's some of the crew members. Here they are on the ocean. Now, <coughs> here's 
I guess that's some sea ice there. The expedition mapped over 1,000 large seep fields or areas of massive methane discharge over 100 meters or 328 feet and mega seep fields each over 1,000 meters in linear dimension. We believe these emissions at this stage have not yet any large impact on global atmospheric methane and climate. Yet these huge carbon GHG capacitors, um, greenhouse gas capacitors, are clearly activated, the ex expedition communication page said. Six megaseeps were registered in both the Laptev and the East Siberian Seas in what the scientists described as the first comprehensive ob observation of active release from methane hydrates in the Siberian Arctic slope system. So that that has been activated is activated and I I'm assuming that's Igor. I'm assuming that's Igor there. There they are. There's some more pictures of the methane. The expedition members spent 40 days on board the academic Keldish research vessel covering a distance of nearly 6,000 nautical miles. For the first time, the scientists managed to take samples of bottom sediments in a methane seep near the delta of River Lena one of Siberia's giant waterways. Along the Lena, the East Siberian Arctic Shelf is fed by other large Arctic rivers like the Katanga, Indigirka, and Kolyma, which deliver significant quantities of organic matter, thus making it particularly vulnerable to climate warming and erosion. And that's the article. Thank you, Igor, for your work. And Natalia, for your work. And all the people on the expedition. I find this fascinating. So, the area that they're talking about. Let's go back up here. To the Arctic. surface level. So this is this is the main area, this whole East Siberia Arctic Shelf and it, this has been activated now and then here around Severnaya Zemlya this is the Latev Sea and here in the Kara Sea. So this was this whole area was where they were. So when you see greens coming up, you can't really know what's really how much is really in there, and um, it has to be a huge, huge area. Uh, I mean, a bigger area than just what a a little bit of flash gets for this to show up for it to show up here so when you see it percolating up um, it's it's really huge it's a large large reading so I would like to finish the show by continuing to read out of the book of Psalms, I'm continuing on my Psalms project. And um, I put two more Psalms videos up on my website this week. 
combining five chapters at a time. And there are 150, so we're up to this one today. Psalms chapter 109 To the chief musician, a psalm of David. Hold not thy peace, O God of my praise. For the mouth of the wicked and the mouth of the deceitful are opened against me. They have spoken against me with a lying tongue. They compassed me about also with words of hatred and fought against me without a cause. For my love they are my adversaries, but I give myself unto prayer, and they have rewarded me with evil for good and hatred for my love. <clears throat> Set thou a wicked man over him, and let Satan stand at his right hand. When he shall be judged, let him be condemned, and let his prayer become sin. Let his days be few, and let another take his office. Let his children be fatherless, and his wife a widow. Let his children be continually vagabonds, and beg. Let them seek their bread also out of their desolate places. Let the extortioner catch all that he hath, and let the strangers spoil his labor. Let there be none to extend mercy unto him, neither let there be any favor his fatherless children. Let his posterity be cut off, and in the generation following let their name be blotted out. Let the iniquity of his fathers be remembered with the Lord, and let not the sin of his mother be blotted out. Let them be before the Lord continually, that he may cut off the memory of them from the earth, because that he remembered not to shew mercy, but persecuted the poor and needy man, that he might even slay the broken in heart. As he loved cursing, so let it come unto him. As he delighted not in blessing, so let it be far from him. As he clothed himself with cursing, like as with his garment, so let it come into his bowels like water, and like oil into his bones. Let it be unto him as the garment which covereth him, and for a girdle wherewith he is girded continually. Let this be the reward of mine adversaries from the Lord, and of them that speak evil against my soul. But do thou for me, O God the Lord, for thy name's sake, because thy mercy is good, deliver thou me, for I am poor and needy, and my heart is wounded within me. I am gone like the shadow when it declineth. I am tossed up and down as the locust. My knees are weak through fasting, and my flesh faileth of fatness. I become also a reproach unto them. When they looked upon me, they shaked their heads. Help me, O Lord my God. O oh, save me according to thy mercy, that they may know that this is thy hand, that thou, Lord, hast done it. Let them curse, but blessed thou. When they arise, let them be ashamed, but let thy servant rejoice. Let mine adversaries be clothed with shame, and let them cover themselves with their own confusion as with a mantle. I will greatly praise the Lord with my mouth, yea, I will praise him among the multitude, for he shall stand at the right hand of the poor to save him from those that condemn his soul. Psalms chapter 109 
so as we close out the show for today I want you to know that I'm praying for everyone we're headed into some very very difficult times but if we have our eyes set on heaven and Jesus in our heart as our compass and our anchor will be okay will be okay and it's time to go home for a lot of us and I welcome it I really welcome it but it won't happen before before the work is done for any of us so I advise you if you haven't gotten right with God and Jesus and gotten your spiritual houses in order that you do so pretty quick I think time is ticking away and the art door is closing spiritually so I'm praying for all of you I love you and until next time God bless you go in peace and I will talk to you soon good night